Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Disney Parks Addict. Today we'll be taking a look at all the rides, shows and attractions found at Busch Gardens in Tampa Bay, Florida for 2023. The park opened in 1959 as the Bush Brewery and Gardens and continued to expand and add extra lands, attractions and animal exhibits throughout its long history. Anheuser-Busch sold Bush Gardens in 2010 to Blackstone, an investment group that already invests in SeaWorld and Legoland and other entertainment sites throughout the world. The brewery aspect to the park was removed and more exciting thrill rides were added, making it one of the top destinations for roller coasters in the US. And if you're driving from the Walt Disney World or Universal Resorts, it only takes about an hour and 15 minutes to arrive at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay. The park has an overall African theme with nine different lands, filled with a variety of rides and shows, as well as plenty of dining and shopping locations. Stick around until the end of the video for some exciting additions that are coming to the park over the next few years. You enter the park into the Morocco themed area, complete with its own bazaar, coffee shops and Morocco. Palace. Here is where you can watch the award-winning ice skating show Turn It Up Remix. With a great mixture of talented skaters and a pumping soundtrack and light projections, this is a great show for all the family to enjoy. Next up is a huge hybrid roller coaster, Iron Guazi. Originally opening as a dual wooden coaster named Guazi in 1999, this new coaster was transformed by RMC in 2022 into a steel and wooden single track coaster. Along with the amazing transformation came some exciting new thrilling elements, including two inversions, a much faster high speed, and many more drops. Overall, this has been a great addition to the park and a fan favorite since its opening. The final attraction in Morocco is Guazi Gliders, a hang glider spinning flat ride that can be found close to the entrance of Iron Guazi. Riders can push up or down on bars to raise or lower their gliders, which is great fun for the younger visitors. As with all my guides, we will head around the park clockwise, which takes us to the next land, Bird Gardens, that currently doesn't include any attractions or shows, but is home to plenty of animal exhibits. You can meet some macaws, watch some flamingos and kookaburras, and check out the kangaroos and wallabies. Throughout the day, you can meet some of the special animal ambassadors and learn lots of facts during the special keeper talks. We now move on to Sesame Street Safari of Fun, which is filled with lots of smaller attractions for the younger visitors. Rides include Air Grover, the steel children's coaster that is great fun for kids that love thrills. Rosita's Djembe Flyaway, a small carousel swing that the little ones can enjoy by themselves. The Count Sambizi Rally is a great chance to drive around on your very own vehicle. Snuffy's Elephant Romp is a flying elephant spinner attraction that reminds me of a classic Disney ride. Elmo Safari Go Round is the small carousel ride which allows you to ride some of your favorite animals. Big Bird's Whirly Birdie is the mini Ferris wheel that takes riders up and around. Zoe Patra's Hippos of the Nile is the awesome small water ride that has one small hill, but is still great fun for the little ones. There are lots of fun play areas for a variety of age ranges, including Elmo's Treehouse Trek, Telly's Jungle Jam, Cookie Monster Canopy Crawl and Cloud Bounce. In the summer months, kids will love playing in Bert and Ernie's Watering Hole, the fun wet play area with lots of interactive water features. Along with all the rides and playgrounds, you can meet your favorite Sesame Street characters throughout the day, as well as enjoying the daily shows, Let's Play Together and Welcome to Our Street. We now move up into Stanleyville, which is home to a great water ride and two amazing coasters. You will first come to Sheikra, the huge 200-foot dive coaster, which was the first of its kind in the US when it opened in 2005. With a heart-pumping drop that takes you into top speeds of 70 miles an hour, a huge loop and splashdown effect, this is still one of the best attractions in the park. Next up is Stanley Falls Flume, a water ride that has been in the park since 1970. 73, making it one of the oldest attractions. This family-friendly flume ride will take you on an adventure through the jungle before heading down a final 40-foot splashdown. You may get wet on this one, which makes it perfect for those looking to cool down on a hot day. The final attraction in Stanleyville is Tigris. This steel launch roller coaster will send you forwards and backwards through the station before shooting you up 150 feet in the air, where it completes a half loop, a heartline roll, two non-inverting loops, and then ending up back in the station. Opening in 2019, 
2019, making it the ninth coaster in the park, this is perfect for fans of thrills. The next land is Jungala, which is currently going through a bit of a transformation, with its former drop tower ride and treetop trails being closed indefinitely. Don't worry, you can still enjoy checking out the animal enclosures in the land, which includes the Tiger Trail that has plenty of indoor and outdoor observation areas, trails, and a bridge to watch and interact with the many tigers on display. You can also check out the Orangutan Outpost, a treetop observation platform to view these wonderful primates. At the top of the park, we come to the next land, Congo. First up is the Congo River Rapids, the white water rafting expedition where you will be greeted by some amazing Komodo dragons in the queue line. You will most likely get soaked on this water ride as you head through the Congo jungle that features sprouting jets, waterfalls, and a water cave, along with extra water jets on the riverbanks, giving non riders a chance to add to the fun. To dry off, I would suggest heading to the next attraction, Kumba. This is a huge steel roller coaster featuring a total of seven inversions, including loops, corkscrews, and a zero G roll. When it first opened in 1993, it had the world's tallest vertical loop, as well as being Florida's tallest, fastest, and longest coaster, making it a certified classic attraction that still gets high wait times to this day. If you're a thrill seeker, make sure you don't miss out on this this one. As you head to the next land, you will come to the final attraction in Congo, the Ubanga Banga Bumper Cars. This classic attraction has been in the park since 1977, which is perfect for all the family to battle it out with the use of bumper cars. The next land is the colourful Pantopia that features lots of attractions for visitors of all ages. First up is the Sand Serpent, the action-packed steel wild mouse roller coaster that has plenty of sharp turns and drops that will make even the experienced coaster fans happy. Stick around until the end of the video to see what might be happening to the Sand Serpent in the near future. Next door is the Pantopia Theatre that currently hasn't got any regular shows but is used during their seasonal offerings. Next up is the Grand Caravan Carousel that has been exciting riders since 1979. Choose from a selection of horses, camels and chariots as you spin on this classic family attraction. This land also includes three smaller attractions for the younger visitors. They include Bush Flyers, a small airplane based spinner attraction, Kiddie Train, a small locomotive ride and Desert Runners, a small Himalaya flat ride that gives the chance for the young ones to ride a motorcycle. Next up is the the thrilling Falcon's Fury. This is not for the faint-hearted as you'll be heading up a 300-foot tower which sounds harmless enough until your seat is pivoted 90 degrees to face straight down and then you are dropped face first at 60 miles an hour. The ride takes about a minute to reach the peak which gives you a chance to see the breathtaking views of the whole of Bush Gardens and even downtown Tampa. Next is the oldest coaster in the park, Scorpion. Opening in 1980, this steel roller coaster still packs a punch with its 60 foot drop, signature loop, bank turns and helixes making for a nice thrilling ride. The land also features lots of dining locations including the Dragon Fire Grill and Pub that hosts live music and a cappella performances throughout the day. The land next to Pantopia is the Serengeti Plain, a huge open area that is filled with lots of African wildlife. This is a good chance to talk about the various VIP tours and safaris that Bush Gardens offer. With their many animal insider and keeper for a day tours, you can pay between $20 to $250 to enjoy a variety of experiences. Their most popular tour is the award-winning Serengeti Safari. This 30-minute off-road tour will get you up close and personal with lots of different animals and you may get the chance to feed some giraffes. For a reasonable price of $40 to $60, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. South of Pantopia, heading back towards the entrance of the park is the next land, Nairobi. Added in 2023 is the brand new Serengeti Flyer. This is a dual giant swing ride, progressively taking riders higher and higher. The ride peaks at a whopping 135 feet and goes up to 68 miles per hour, which makes it another great thrilling ride in the park. 
overlooking the 65 acre Serengeti Plain, you'll be able to spot lots of different animals before plunging back down to earth. There are lots of animal exhibits in Nairobi, including gorillas, penguins, tortoises, elephants, and lots more. You can find more animal ambassadors in Animal Connections and during the various Keeper Talks. You can also check out the Animal Care Center, where you can observe first-hand animal care done by professionals every day. Nairobi is also home to the main train station for the Serengeti Express. This is an amazing train ride that takes you all around the park and through each land. You'll see lots of animals throughout your journey, especially during the Serengeti Plain section. With stops in Congo, Stanleyville, and the main station in Nairobi, this is also a great way to navigate the park. We now head to the next land, Edge of Africa. Africa, which is home to one attraction, Cheetah Hunt. This steel launch coaster takes riders on an amazing journey across the Serengeti Plain. Through its three launches, you'll be darting from side to side and encounter a few near misses, as well as enjoying its one inversion, the Heartline Roll, and a considerable amount of airtime. Although it isn't the most thrilling coaster in the park, it is definitely one that can be enjoyed over and over again. Along with the coaster is Cheetah Run, an animal exhibit that is home to 14 cheetahs, where there will be plenty of chances to observe and learn about the fast is animals in the world. Also in Edge of Africa is a starting station for the Skyride, a gondola system that transports visitors to Stanleyville and offers amazing views of the park and animal enclosures. Unfortunately, the ride is still under maintenance, but hopefully it will reopen later in the year. You can check the official Bush Gardens website for an up-to-date list of all the attractions that will be closed during your visit. We now come to the final land in the park, Egypt. The main attraction in the land is Montu the huge steel inverted roller coaster. Named after the Egyptian falcon god of war, this massive coaster will be a shock to the senses with its seven inversions, 128 foot drop, and lots of other exciting elements. It has consistently been in the top 50 coasters in the world for the last 24 years running and is no doubt a fan favorite attraction. The final attraction in Egypt and this guide is the steel spinning roller coaster Cobra's Curse. Opening in 2016, this highly themed ride includes live snakes in the queue and an expanded storyline that involves a king's curse and amazing theming throughout. Although the coaster doesn't feature any inversions, it will definitely leave you dizzy through the bank turns, helixes and spinning ride cars. Before we reveal what is coming to the park, if you're planning a trip to the nearby Disney or Universal Resort, I would definitely recommend spending a day at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay as they truly offer something unique. If you would like to check ticket pricings, then take a look at the official SeaWorld website through my affiliate link in the description box below, as it's a great way to save by buying in advance or getting a combo ticket with SeaWorld and to help support my channel. There has been a rumor for a while now, but we believe Busch Gardens Tampa Bay will be adding a brand new roller coaster in 2024. A permit was filed for the removal of the Wild Mouse Coaster, San Serpent in Pantopia, to make way for a brand new Giga Coaster. No details have been officially announced, but it's fun to speculate. That completes this guide for Busch Gardens Tampa. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to get more videos about theme parks from all over the world. If you want to know more about SeaWorld Orlando, then check out this guide video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Disney Parks Addict.